Hey, everybody. Welcome to Intermediate OOP in Drupal. Uh, we're going to discuss patterns, services, events, and dependency injection. And we're going to learn about each of these things by starting with a baseline of knowledge and building up to it. So I call this Intermediate OOP because by the end of it, you will certainly be an intermediate. You will have you will understand the intermediate object oriented programming in Drupal. So am I. So I'm Jonathan Daggerhart. I run a company called Daggerhart Lab. We're based out of Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm one of the organizers of Drupal Camp Asheville. You can find me around the web at the name Daggerhart for all these various services. I'm not on Facebook, but if you want to reach out by email or Twitter or any other way. That, that works great for me. So Daggerheart Lab is a relatively new company. We started last March and we are, we are five employees and a total of maybe a dozen to 15 people if you count contractors. We do WordPress, Drupal, and Shopify stuff. So I've been programming in PHP since the early 2000s. I started at Drupal for something and uh, WordPress to something. I've been doing HTML, JavaScript, sort of just the web development in general since uh, the late 90s. And over that time, I'm self-taught, but I've really loved learning all the theory and the reusable sort of the concepts. And since I like learning that stuff, I also like teaching it. And I feel like it's really valuable to, to, to know. And that's why a lot of my presentations focus on these these types of big picture concepts. All right, and so this is an overview of what we're going to do in this training, intermediate OOP and Drupal. We're going to start with the term a lot of terminology. Well, not a lot, but some terminology. And from that terminology, we're going to build up concepts. And from concepts, we we will start looking at, at really common patterns, useful common patterns. We'll talk about what a pattern is. Don't, don't worry about that if this is uh, new to you. Then we'll start looking at how those patterns and concepts are used in Drupal and Symfony. Oh, and I do have a bullet here for a recap, which I don't have a slide for, but I imagine that between sections, we can, we can, we can answer questions or we can just talk about things as needed. All right, so we're gonna start at the beginning with some terminology. These are the basics. So the objects in object-oriented programming is built on these basic terms. The concept of an interface is a template for a class. It also considered a contract for the class. An interface tells a class what methods it must implement. A class is a template for an object. So a class, a class is the actual implementation of of an interface and an object is an instance of a class. This is very basic and we're just mainly defining these words so that when I start rambling them off for the next three or four hours that there's no questions at all. So here in this little example we define a simple interface and we see that a class implements an interface and that we can create new instances of the pizza class separate instances and these words are going to come up quite a bit. So what is an interface? An interface merely defines method signatures of a class. When you write an interface in PHP, well, when you write an interface in any programming language, you are defining what the, what the method sh should be named, what parameters should, should be passed into those methods, and the return statements as well, or the return data type. So, oh yes, let me, let me pull up and let me take one step back. Uh, I stated earlier that one issue with this presentation tool is that I don't have a lot of room for, for complex code. So generally what we're gonna need to do is just sort of take a look at these things and then remember them for the next slide. And again, we can pull up actual code later and go through it and, but we're dealing with some limitations here. So this interface defines an interface for a pizza, and it has a method to add a topping to the pizza, 
and a method that gets all toppings on a pizza. Later, we define the class, which implements the interface. The, the, since this class implements this interface, this class must define a method called add topping with this signature and must define a method called get toppings. Just basic, uh, basic stuff. So next we have objects. So an object is an instance of a class. We can create a new pizza by saying new pizza. And then, then we start performing actions or tasks or retrieving data from that object. So we're just adding, adding toppings to this pizza. Uh, a objects are, are separate from each other. So if I create a, a pizza here that is a new instance of the pizza class, I can, I can do it again here later. And this pizza number two is totally different. Just a simple example. So another thing that comes up is, is visibility. The terminology of visibility are the, these three words that were right before a class property or a class method. And they are public, private, and protected. And essentially, these are the access that other parts of the system have to the data on the class or the behaviors or methods on the class. So if something is defined as public, every other part of the system can access and change that, a, that property, or it can run that method. If it's private, only this exact class can run it. And if it's protected, then only this exact class and its descendants can access that property or method. And here's just a very simple example of that. So if we had a class called pizza and it had uh, a public method called get toppings, then anything could run that. If we had a private method, or if we had determined that the method was private, in this example, remove all toppings, then if some other parts of the system attempts to run, remove all toppings, we get a fatal error because it's not allowed. And we have the protected property in this example of toppings, which other parts of the system cannot access. But if we were to inherit this class with a, if we were to extend this class using inheritance, then that, that other class could access this property. So it's protected within, you could say, the family of classes, or it's private to only this one class, or it's totally public. All right, so that's that was the basics. One moment, let me start up this thing for myself, a little helper. So that was the basics, and, and now I want to go from the basic terminology to the basic basic concepts and these concepts are going might be words you've heard a lot and it's going to come up quite a bit in this presentation because understanding these fundamental concepts allow us to build up to bigger ideas so the first thing the first thing I want to note is data types so if you've done any amount of programming then you know about some different main data types like an integer or a string or a float or an array this is very common the when dealing with object-oriented programming, as we create a new class, we are creating a new data type. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Type hinting is a way that we define what parameters are passed through our methods specifically. We limit the method to certain data types. That's why it's called type hinting. Inheritance is the creation of a new class from another class or interface. This is the this is the um, idea of taking one class, a very simple class, and then extending it and making a more complicated class or a class that works differently. We'll see examples of this as well. And then the concept of polymorphism is, is that two different things, two different things are can be the same thing. So we that's probably another example of, that's probably best represented as an example. The, Two different data types can that share a common ancestor are the same data type. So we'll look at that. This is the found polymorphism is the foundation behind good practices behind type hinting, and all of this will hopefully make sense. Uh, <laughs> make sense once we go through the examples. 
All right, so let's talk about types and type hinting. So when we're creating a new class, we're creating new data types. If I create a class, if I define a new class called pizza, then our system now has a new data type called pizza. So we have integers, strings, arrays, and pizzas. That is, we have now defined that as a data type. If I create a new class called pizza oven, then we have a whole new type of data called pizza oven. The type hinting is when you write a function or a method and the for, before defining the name of the parameter that goes into that method, you, you say what type that parameter is expected to be. So in this example, a pizza oven has a method called cook and it, it essentially demands that the first parameter passed into this method is of the type pizza. And then the parameter's name is whatever we want it to be called within the method. But this, this comes up quite a bit. And the concept of type hinting is great practice. And with, with polymorphism, we can make it extremely useful and we can build loosely coupled systems. And we'll see that in polymorphism. So when, when I say that we're creating new data types, there is a function in PHP called is a, where you can ask, you can ask the system, is this, uh, is this variable a data type of the given name? And so we've defined a new class called pizza and we've instantiated a new uh, pizza object. And if we ask the system, is this variable pizza of the data type pizza, it will be true. And the same goes for this instance of a pizza oven named oven. The purpose of this example is just to show that we really are creating new data types. It's, it's sort of, we're building, we're building the system that we want to work with. And this is very, very powerful and a useful way of thinking about, about classes. We can make classes that do, that, that represent exactly the type of data that only our system needs or performs tasks that only our system needs. And they are very much real to the system. It's not like an associative array that that's full of whatever values. Maybe you pass around a lot of associative arrays in Drupal 7. And at the end of the day, no matter what data is in that array, it's still just an array. Whereas if we're going to an object-oriented world, we want to define real objects. So there is a question about, should we type hint strings like any data, data type? Generally, yes. I think there's gonna be some times where you write a method that could accept a string or an integer. Uh, but so, so in a case where you don't care, in a case where two different data types could come in as a parameter, then you you don't want to you don't want to uh, type hint because if let's look at this example here at the bottom. So if I try to run the cook method on a variable that is not of pizza, it's the number one here. It'll be a fatal error. So building your methods to to expect specific types forces you to be to be very strict with the way you use your data. But there are a few cases where you could end up writing a method where, so, where it, it might be a string or it might be an integer or a float. That comes up in cases where, where you're dealing with, like sometimes numbers saved in the database. If the database isn't built correctly or strictly, you may have a text field where people are storing numbers well, when you get that data from the database, that data is going to come back as text. It's not going to be an integer. So in that sort of case, you, you don't know or care too much whether the, the, met, the property or the argument is going to come in as a string or a number because eventually, eventually your method is going to treat it as a number anyway. But generally speaking, type in everything. And if you run into a situation where your method could accept two different two different types of data, then chances are there was another design decision made in the past that, that was a little, that went a little wrong, if that, if that makes sense. But 
sometimes you're dealing with other people's code and you just have to take what you've been given in which case like don't don't demand a type in all right so let's look at inheritance so inheritance is is where we take an existing class and then we extend it with a new class definition so here i've created a class called pizza and it has an array of toppings and then I've made a new class called mustard pizza because it was the weirdest thing I could think of. And it extends the pizza class. So this mustard class has all the functionality of the pizza class, as well as the new functionality I defined in the mustard class. So this mustard class can add toppings, but this pizza class cannot add mustard. <laughs> so it's a little contrived example and we will get into real world examples. I'm just trying to keep it really, really simple to start. And then we'll build up to some, some interesting stuff. So if I instantiate a new, let's see what the code down here is doing. I instantiate a new mustard pizza and I can add toppings because it has inherited the functionality of the pizza class. And also I can add mustard down here. And then if we dump out whether or not this pizza object is a mustard pizza, or whether or not this pizza object is a pizza, both are true. And this is the concept, this is the concept called polymorphism that we're gonna look at next. So let's, uh, let's, well, actually we're gonna look at polymorphism in a second, but a since the mustard pizza extends the pizza, any instance of a mustard pizza is also an instance of a pizza. So let's look at interfaces. Interface, when you in implement interfaces, you are performing inheritance. When, if we had an interface called a pizza interface and we create a class that implements that interface, then, then our pizza objects are both are both of the type pizza and of the type pizza interface. That is because when we, when we use inheritance, we, we, we are taking advantage or we gain the, hmm, what's the right way of saying this? We gain the advantage, I guess, of polymorphism. So we're going to look at that. Okay, so what is polymorphism? That's one of these words that I ignored for a lot of my career, but ultimately it's pretty simple, I think, or I hope to make it sound simple. Polymorphism is the concept that one instance of an object can actually be multiple things. So if you think about this from, if you think about this from this pizza example, let's just go through this. So we have an interface called pizza, we make a class called pizza that implements that interface. And we make a class called mustard pizza that extends our original pizza class. So if, if I then later instantiate a instance of the mustard pizza, it is, it is a mustard pizza of the data type mustard pizza. It is also of the data type pizza. And it is also of the data type pizza interface. And that idea is called polymorphism that one thing can be a lot of things. And polymorphism is, it, the concept of polymorphism, just sort of understanding that simple idea that through inheritance, your data types, your, your data types become more than one data type or can become more than one data type is, what's, is what we're going to turn around and make into uh, a best practice around type hinting. So let's take a look at this class called the pizza oven. So we, we, are, we remember our pizza oven where we have this cook method. And before we were just demanding or type hinting that the parameter first parameter be of a pizza. And, and what that meant was the only thing that could ever be passed into this cook method was a object of the class pizza. Whereas if we go to the very base level of our inheritance um, path, I guess, and we actually say that what, should, what can be passed into this cook method is a pizza interface. It's anything that agrees to the contract of what is a pizza. Then suddenly our, 
our method is type hinted very loosely throughout the system. It, it's type hinted to the contract or to the, the template that defines what methods must exist on a class, but not how those methods are implemented. Because remember, an interface merely says what methods and their what methods and their signatures must exist on a class. A class is the implementation of those methods and signatures. So let's go down here and let's uh, make a new instance of our mustard pizza. We are then going to make an instance of our oven and we're going to cook our pizza. Well, since our mustard pizza is a pizza and is a pizza interface, then we can successfully cook our mustard pizza because we have we have achieved the requirements of this method in that we have passed it a pizza interface, a, an object of the data type pizza interface. So if we were to then just pass something else into cook, like any string or any other type of object that is neither a mustard or pizza or pizza interface, then we get a fatal error. Because when you type hint, when you type hint your uh, method parameters, you're, you're actually demanding that the values passed into that method are of a certain data type. So polymorphism allows us to treat one thing as possibly many things. And the best practice here is that when you're writing, when you're writing methods, uh, type hint your parameters and type hint them against an interface of some sort. That's what allows our, our methods to be very flexible. It's what allows someone later, two years from now, when they've taken over working on this project, to define a whole new class called Veggie Pizza. And it's going to extend pizza, and therefore it is a pizza interface, and we can cook it because that new Veggie Pizza has met the requirements of the method. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably just repeating myself here. So this is a best practice program to interfaces. When you're, writing, when you're writing classes that have methods that expect parameters, provide a type hint, first of all, or else inside of your function, you're gonna have to check if, if this is a thing, then whatever. So provide type, type hinting so that you force the rest of the system to use your method correctly as intended, but don't type hint to a specific class name, type hint to an interface. Type hint to the functionality your method demands that this parameter have, which is generally a method. So what this means practically is that when we are writing new classes in our code and we are creating new data objects or, or other, uh, other types of object services, we'll look at all this later, it, it generally means that you'll want to create new interfaces. If you say like, oh, I need, I need an object that just sort of holds some information about a cat, a type of cat. Well, go ahead and make a, your object called cat and also make a cat interface. That way, when you start using that cat throughout the system, you program to the interface, which means type hinting interfaces. So you will write more interfaces and you should write more interfaces. Let's see, and type hint to interfaces. All right, so next up is, I was very optimistic when planning this originally and I had an exercise in here and then I thought, you know what? I don't know how exercises are gonna work over a remote training presentation, but, but just, let's just take a moment to think about this. So we were assigned a task to create new data types of a rabbit and a carrot. Each has to implement at least one interface and a rabbit should be able to eat. Then we're going to write a program where we feed a carrot to a rabbit. And I can show you the easiest way I can come up with it. So we have a happy rabbit. We're going to define a new interface that is a new data type called food. We're going to make a new uh, class, which is a new data type called carrot, which itself is the data type called food. We're going to make an interface for an animal. And this interface demands that any animal uh, so an animal is a new data type that any animal must define a method called eat and eat expects the food interface to be passed in as the par uh, parameter. 
And then we will go ahead and make our class called rabbit. Rabbit's a new data type. It is an animal. And this is where we define the implementation of our, of our method that the interface demanded we create. And the implementation of this method is that it echoes yum yum whenever we pass it food. So then if we instantiate a new carrot, instantiate a new rabbit, and then we tell the, the bunny is what I called it to eat the carrot, it echoes out yum yum. This is very contrived. We will get to not contrived examples later, but this is just sort of like uh, reinforcing what we just talked about, that interfaces and classes are defining new data types. And when a class implements an interface, it is using inheritance. And when you extend the class, it's using inheritance. And through inheritance, uh, that with inheritance, we gain polymorphism. And the concept of polymorphism is what we keep in mind when we write our methods, because we type hint to interfaces. We program to the interface. All right. So next, let's, this is a good place to stop. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts about this? Because from here, we're going to go, we're going to start using these ideas. This is sort of the fundamentals that will make the rest of this make sense with a few best practices sprinkled in.